Hello everybody, this is Joseph Haptank from Orgnet and I'll be presenting you with uh, a series of tutorials. This is the first one when I'll be teaching you a professional approach to jQuery, Ajax, ASP.NET, website development, application architecture and system design. Um, I have uh, quite a few years of experience in making a very very well structured professional websites using these uh, using these technologies and um, I'll be sharing with you some tricks and some good uh, approaches to certain uh, certain problems and certain ways to tackle difficulties so that your websites and your the things that you design are a thousand fold better and that you the skills that you have just become exponentially more useful. Now notice I'm not going to teach you basics about jQuery, ASP.NET, JSON or databases or any of this. I assume that you know all these things. This is a pro uh, tutorial. This is not a, a newbie tutorial. If you don't know what object-oriented programming is, if you struggle with jQuery or if you don't know what relational databases are or how to make database mappers or some basic stuff, then this tutorial will not be you, for you because I'll be I will be skipping all this, assuming that you know that, and I will be going to a dead point, important points uh, that are just crucial to know, uh, which many professionals just miss. They have all the knowledge, but they don't know they don't know how to pl apply it properly. So um, in this this in this particular series, I'll be talking about database structure and how to create a really professional databases which uh, allow you a full flexibility and maintainability that you would ever need. This is very 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 important because whenever you're doing some projects, let's say you get a, you get a, a, an offer and you're making a project for let's say three months or something like that and then after it's finished it's not over yet, the client will always come back uh, to have some updates or something like that and therefore you have to learn to make software which is easily maintainable so that when he comes to make some changes add new product type or something like that you can just do it like this with a snap of a finger and this always starts with a really well designed database you have to think ahead in such a way though which wouldn't put too much overhead you have to make structure that is easily implantable so you don't spend too much time on doing the structure yet it allows you to think ahead okay so what are the principles when you when you program? Well, there is the pro, there's the OOP three, the three principles of OOP object oriented programming, which is the inheritance encapsulation polymorphism. And frankly, I don't like to talk about that too much because these are just big words and frankly if you look at them, they all talk about pretty much the same thing, uh, which is how to basically structure the class class uh, classes well. But why would you structure classes well? Because you want to avoid code repetition no code repetition this is the mantra that you should have when you're programming of course a little bit like tiny little bit is okay but like generally every single time you have any sort of code repetition you gotta avoid it it's 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 a fundamental principle that if you follow you will do everything right because basically the code repetition is one of the biggest horrors and nightmares of of all the programmers because it kills the maintainability inst instantaneously. So, uh, what are we well, now we're going to try to apply this principle, this no code repetition principle, which of course will result in using inheritance and encapsulation polymorphism into databases. So, most of you perhaps know that, I mean, I hope everybody knows that, you can't have, uh, you can't have um, uh, inheritance in the databases, but you can mimic it. You can imitate it using uh, using certain table structures. And basically, what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna um, I have the database prepared already, so I'm just gonna uh, I'm not showing you how to <laughs> create tables. Uh, I'm gonna just make a very simple, uh, very very simple database. Which basically, let's imagine that we have a project where you basically want to have some users, which who are able to uh, add articles, and then these articles would, would 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 make your website basically very very simple, very very simple um, uh, project like five minute job basically. So, what kind of we have to think? What kind of functionality we want from user? User we want of course to be able to log in. So here there's email password. Is email I'm actually using as as username. You can have extra field for username. I usually don't do it because 
because well people don't want to do it they remember their email but they hardly ever remember their their username so it's it's not popular anymore then you usually have a full name you can get it from uh, uh, it's it's, not, it's polite to just say hi and so pretty much these three things would already uh, these four fields would be already enough id of course is the is the indexer right now of course you many people would say what about creation date time uh, what about for example uh, total you know total uh, login count and shit sorry for my language and really silly inappropriate fields like this and i'm gonna say one thing notice Article will as well have creation date time and some sort of uh, maybe the uh, total edit count or something like this or last edited count or something like that. So we immediately see that this sort of feels like any uh, any sort of information that actually is a history of some sort of activity of certain table or some object shouldn't be here because it will be repeated throughout many tables user table article table if you have other other tables like for example um, I don't know movies f files any sort of this kind of things you would have this repeated over and over again therefore you don't want to have these fields here this actually against the good design you want to have your tables and I'm gonna repeat it over and over again as small as possible you want to have your tables as small as possible. They have to be down to the point. What is the user? Email, password, full name. That's it. If you want to have a field about me, no, there will be an article about user, and we'll take the come to this later. If you want to have a creation date time, no, this will be a log about user. You gotta keep your tables small and clearly understandable. You want to avoid always tables which have 50 or 60 fields and if you work with projects which are which have been designed 10 years ago you will have this problem you have tables which have 50 fields and like you know most of them are nullable and you have hard time to understand what on earth is going on there so but I'm gonna tell you to talk about a very important concept right now because obviously this is gonna take much more than one tutorial but I'm gonna just talk about one thing that many people don't do and it will save your but thousand times when you're doing when you're doing da databases, it's gonna save you a lot of time. It's something I call a global inheritance. Now, how do you make inheritance? You basically ma add a table that um, the table relates to, and then if, you, for example, you have five tables that would relate to this one table, and this above table would have let's say five fields, then obviously all these tables, let's the user article and let's say video or, or file by relating to the upper table they would immediately uh, inherit all the fields that are in this table of course it doesn't inherit directly but it mimics it so that's what you want to do you always want to have a, uh, if you want to have some common functionality you always inherit uh, from it by adding relation so let's just do it at table I have I call it DB object but what did I do I called this on purposefully a second ago a global inheritance by that I mean that I will have a table which I call DB object basically, which every single thing that is some sort of data, which contains some sort of data, uh, and I mean like data object, not logs or or you know some uh, type fields, but like some sort of data, uh, tangible data like user, article, file, picture, um, anything else like that, that would inherit from it. So basically, I this thing has only one field, it's just ID. Because this is just a global identifier to unify all the all the different data carrying tables, I would say. I, I call them data carriers because it's not a type specifying table, it is actually a data carrying table. So what you do in this case, you inherit from this table all of them. User, article, file, YouTube, video, video, any sort of other things, place, hotel, uh, trip, flight, anything you have inherits from this by having a relation to it. So for every single user created or article created, you would have one DB object. Now notice this is this is big int. Um, obviously this is big int because you're gonna have thousands and hundreds of thousands maybe even of this object. So you wanna you, you don't wanna limit yourself to int. But now, uh, so we have this small but very nice inheritance structure in the database. Now let's think what actually is happening. 
Notice that now if I added here, for example, a creation date time field, all of these tables would have creation date time. Obviously, I'm not going to do it because I have better ways of doing that, but I'm just showing you. If I add here field right now, it will be contained by all the dollar tables. So if these tables would uh, all have certain field, you want to mimic this inheritance in this way, you want to mimic the inheritance and add this field. Of course, if it's one, then maybe not, but you will usually see there's many of them. You would mimic the inheritance by adding three, four fields here, having, let's say, a timestamp table, for example, which is obviously not good. I'm going to talk about how to solve the problem of logging very well in the in, in tutorial. And then you basically add five, four fields, which are common for these two tables, and then bow, bow, you, you, you inherit from that in this way. And you have this all the fields here, all the fields here, and no code repetition. Very nice design. Now, why call the wine a very nice design? This, this, this is because you would be surprised how often you end up adding more fields, and then you see that there's, there are patterns. Here are some fields, there are some fields, and then you end up having this horrible headache uh, with having multiple fields uh, with different names, and then by accident you make a spelling mistake in the name, and then suddenly you have creation date time, and then in the other table you have creation date team and then there's one letter missing something like that and then you have all your objects ready and you can't make you can't easily change the name or something like that and it becomes a nightmare for maintainability trust me you don't want to go there avoid code repetition whether it is database and it's actually column repetition or or the or or code repetition in the in the code Okay, I'm gonna wrap this up because I want to keep them always below 15 minutes. Uh, I assume that it's better to have short tutorials rather than long tutorials, uh, many short rather than one long. So this will be one of the many tutorials and um, I hope you learned something. Remember guys what I told you because I have experience in this stuff. You want to pick up on the small habits that good programmers have and in order to learn how to be a good programmer because you can learn the knowledge from Wikipedia, internet, tutorials, whatever else, but the good habits are the things that make you a good programmer. Not, oh, I have th I have programmed 1,000 lines in jQuery or 10,000 lines and whatever else. Good habits. And these things are usually not explained in books, unfortunately, because they're not standardized. Okay, everybody, take care. I hope so. I'll see you soon, soon on, some, on, some, on some other tutorial. And uh, because you are so smart right now that you have you know how to make inheritance in, data da table, in databases and you learned about the idea and the positive th uh, concept of having a global inheritance for all your data carriers. And because you know what data carrier is right now, you can uh, go on and ask your boss for a raise because you're smarter right now than before and you can make much better databases. And see you in the next tutorial. Take care, guys. Have a wonderful day. Cheers.